dear what happened what to do father i don't have anyone everybody left me i think only god is my strength only he is my consolation now don't worry come with me come yes dear tell me now what happened i lost my job i lost my job and my friends they betrayed me they are not with me my parents they how how put me out of the home don't worry be courageous i will tell you a story this all common in our life yes father jesus being the son of god became human being in order to lead us towards the path of life he not only taught but also lived thus jesus practiced what he preached and preached what he practiced and he set an example for us though he was god he humbled himself to take the form of human being he was like one among us and lived with us suffered with us but he didn't sin in all his presence with us he taught us that god so loved the world so that he gave his only son to save the world his presence and his life teaches us god loves us the beatitudes is to declare the blessings given by god's kingdom beatitudes also regarded as painting a picture of the character of that kingdom as we step into god's kingdom we hope to become more like those named as blessed more meek more merciful hungrier for righteousness more apt to make peace and so on this gives the beatitudes a moral imperative later when jesus says make disciples of all nations 
the beatitudes describe the character these disciples are meant to take on the beatitudes describe the character of god's kingdom but they are not the conditions of salvation jesus doesn't say only the pure in heart may enter the kingdom of heaven there are a blessings for anyone who is consent to join themselves to the kingdom of god which has come near and jesus also teaches us to love to love your neighbor as yourself is the second and great commandment of jesus it immediately follows his commandment of loving god with all your heart with all your mind and with all your soul for loving this commandment is the key jesus christ gave us for loving others as god loves us a pharisee once tried to test jesus after asking him what the greatest of the commandment was the pharisee asked who is my neighbor instead of giving a direct answer jesus christ turned to the question on the pharisee by telling the parable of the good samaritan we always search for our neighbors who do good to us who help us in our needs failing to become a neighbor to others jesus when he preached about the commandment of love tells all of us to become a neighbor to everyone at the end of parable jesus says do likewise because he intends that when we become neighbor to others and start loving them we will do good things for them without seeking any personal or selfish motives in our life that's the purest love that jesus asks us to present to others Jesus tells us You have heard that it was said You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy But I say to you love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven 
for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends the rain on the just and on the unjust to explain this jesus told us a beautiful parable the parable of weeds in the wheat but while everyone was sleeping his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away when the wheat sprouted and formed heads then the weeds also appeared sir didn't you sow good seed in your field then where did the weeds come from an enemy did this you want us to go and pull them up no because while you're pulling up the weeds you may root up the wheat with them let both grow together until harvest at the time of the harvest the farmer told the harvesters to collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned then the farmer told the harvesters to gather the wheat and bring it into the barn yeah we could see that god allows the weeds to live in the wheat until the final harvest and things would be sorted out then and god makes the sun to rise on the good and on the evil too then who are we to judge that's why jesus says judge not you will not be judged judge not you will not be judged christ asks us to go further in our love for others than just tolerating the presence of people who are treating you badly that is hard enough to do sometimes but christ asks us to take love a step further and to pray for those who hurt us can you imagine that how many of us pray for the people who hurt us if you do manage to pray for people who hurt you then sometimes it may seem like cutting teeth at first to pray for them it is difficult to pray for those people who causes a lot of pain and suffering and many times we are barely able to pray for them but then it gets a little easier maybe that was the reason christ said to do this we are changed by our prayers prayer changes who we are it changes us a little at a time to love like christ loves our attitudes towards other people will change through prayer and eventually we will be able to love them the way jesus does jesus loves people right where they are despite the sinful state of their lives and we are called to do the same the lord always saw the person first not their sin he never excluded anyone regardless as to their state in life a lack of holiness either and that is something we all should try to work on to prayer prayer is the lifting up of our, our minds and hearts to god to adore him to thank him for his benefits to ask his forgiveness and to beg of him all the graces we need whether for soul or body when we pray to god we become close to god and a friend of god and we been given with so many examples in the bible and even in secular history the numerous people whom we consider as saints 
are the best witnesses to know the power of prayer Jesus teaches us the importance of perseverance in prayer suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and you says friend lend me 3 loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey and i have nothing to offer him replies from within do not bother me the door has already been locked and my children and i are already in bed i cannot get up to give you anything i tell you if he does not get up to give the visitor the loss because of their friendship you he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence jesus tells us ask and you will receive seek and you will find knock and the door will be opened to you for everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks the door will be opened the teaching that we persist in prayer is something of a mystery god is not deaf or forgetful or stubborn yet he teaches in many places that we are to persevere even to the point of pestering in our prayer we need ask with god as we ask with a friend in order that we will understand him in our hearts he knows our need but that should make to forget his love which has no limits which we often do in our lives forgive there is hardly a more temperate if not absolute frightening warning to any professing christian than that found near the end of jesus teaching on prayer for if you forgive others their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive others for their trespasses neither will your father forgive your trespasses here is both a promise and a warning jesus promises god's forgiveness to those who forgive others while at the same time warns of god's silent judgment on those who withhold forgiveness forgive just as you have been forgiven forgive just as you have been forgiven this raises of forgiveness of those who sin against us to the level of god's forgiveness of our sins against him clearly god's forgiveness is now our standard in fact there is no other standard for the genuine christian jesus also tells her the parable of the merciful servant the parable of the unforgiving servant the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants and when he had begun to settle accounts one was brought to him who owed him 10000 talents but as he was not able to pay his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and that payment be made the servant therefore fell down before him saying master have patience with me and i will pay you all Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat saying, "Pay me what you owe." So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him saying, "Have patience with me, and I will pay you all." 
and he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master and all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that. This parable teaches us two things about sin. The first one, it is beyond our capacity to repay. And the second one, it is greater than any offense we have suffered or could suffer at the hands of others. Without really seeing ourselves as penniless sinners, the forgiveness of God is a prominent theme throughout the scripture, one that should invoke from us expressions of wonder and praise. What is the bottom line of God's forgiveness? He has seen me at my worst and still loves me because He knows everything I have ever thought or done. There are no skeletons in my closet. His love for me cannot be earned and therefore cannot be lost. Christ not only removes my condemnation and considers me innocent, He declares me righteous. I am as acceptable, yes, commendable to the Father as Christ Himself. God is totally and permanently satisfied with me because He is totally and forever satisfied with Christ's work on my behalf. If we have admitted, confessed and repented of our sins, we have been forgiven by God. But there is yet another dimension and evidence of forgiveness. If we have experienced God's forgiveness, it will be shown in our forgiveness of others. In the parable of Merciful Servant, Jesus teaches that forgiving others is part of our own forgiveness. Like this, He has taught so many wonderful things for life and all His teachings are interconnected and are linked to one another. One can never ever follow His teachings, but one can never say, I follow the teachings of Jesus, but accept forgiveness. Because everything is interconnected and you can never follow anyone except all. We may think, is it possible by our human weaknesses to follow all these teachings of our Lord Jesus? And for this question, Jesus comforts us saying, my yoke is light and you will find rest for your souls and also saying i have already overcame the world so we need not to fear because the one who have won the world is with us only think we have to have faith in god and move with God, so that His grace will help us to know Him more and to follow His footsteps more fervently. When you are with Jesus, your sufferings can be more meaningful because Jesus has overcome sufferings. Yes, Father, 
what you have said is right father i will go father jesus is with me i will be strong with him i am hero thank you father thank you for enlightening me father thank you very much father Please bless me father. Thank you father.